Today I want to tell you a story about what became of RKO Pictures, one of the most influential movie producers, I guess you would say, movie studios of the 20th century. Shout out Howard Hughes, one of my biggest role models in my life. And this story involves a man who's still alive by the name of Ted Hartley and a babe named Dina Merrill. Honestly, dude, Dina Merrill, 1968, could get it. So let's get right into it if you guys want to hear more stories and informational encyclopedia-like stuff. Hit that like subscribe button and let's get right into what is RKO Pictures and what does Ted Harley and Dina Merrill have to do with it. RKO Pictures was a major American film production and distribution company that operated during the golden age of Hollywood. The company was established in 1928 through the merger of the Keith Albee Orpheum Theater Chain, KAO, the Radio Corporation of America, RCA, and the Film Booking Offices of America, FBO. The initials RKO was derived from the Radio Corporation of America's acronym. RKO became one of the big five studios of Hollywood during the studio system era. It was known for producing and distributing a wide range of films, including musicals, dramas, comedies, and film noirs. RKO was responsible for some iconic and influential films, such as Citizen Kane in 1941, directed by Orson Welles, which is often regarded as one of the greatest films in the history of cinema. However, despite its successes, after the death of Howard Hughes, RKO faced financial challenges and underwent various changes in ownership and management over the years. The studio struggled to maintain a consistent level of profitability, and by the late 50s, early 1960s, it faced financial difficulties and was eventually dissolved as a major studio. RKO Pictures and Assets and Film Library have since been owned by different entities, and the studio itself no longer operates as a major player in the film industry. However, it still does exist. And this is where Ted Hartley and Dina Merrill come into play. And let's talk about Dina Merrill, the babe herself first, and then let's get into who Ted Hartley is and how this whole story comes full circle. Again, if you're still watching, hit that like and subscribe button. Your support would mean the world. In 1987, Ted Hartley engaged with Pavilion Communications Incorporated, an entity designed for acquiring smaller entertainment companies. And during this period, Ted Hartley had gotten and engaged and married to Dina Merrill, who was a Harris. And we'll talk about more about Dina later. But Ted Hartley discovered an opportunity to take control of RKO Pictures. So in 91, 1991, Ted Hartley and his wife, Dina Merrill, acquired 51% of RKO Pictures, merging it with Pavilion Communications to form RKO Pictures LLC. Their initial major project was, was to remake the Mighty Joe Young movie in 1998. As the chairman and CEO of RKO Pictures, Hartley played a crucial role in overseeing RKO's global development and production activities across movies, television, stage, and the other entertainment and distribution avenues. Notable productions under Ted Hartley's leadership included the remake of The Magnificent Ambersons in 2002, Shade in 2003, and as well as successful Broadway musicals like Never Gonna Dance in 2003 and Curtains in 2007. Starting from 1981's Carbon Copy, RK General, which was the entity before, you know, Mr. Ted Hartley took over, they went through a few, you know, a couple projects that had Burt Reynolds, Dolly Parton, and Jack Nicholson. There really wasn't much happening besides, you know, Half Moon Street and Hamburger Hill until Mr. Ted Harley took over. And the reason they took over was ever since Howard Hughes had moved on from the company and died, there was multiple owners. So Basically, before Ted Hartley, there was the West Ray Capital Corporation under the control of William E. Simon and Ray Chambers, who acquired RK through Entertainment Acquisition Corporate in late 1987, and they formed the Six Flags Entertainment Incorporation slash RKO. 
and that combined RKO with Six Flags amusement parks. Yes, Six Flags and RKO were a thing. And in RKO, this was when they were sold to Ted Hartley and his wife, Dina Merrill, who post serials Harris. Yes, we'll talk about Dina Merrill being the Harris to the post serials. Like her great, her dad, super famous guy. And this led to them creating movies with Disney and others. But when we move into the 2000s, RKO Pictures participated as co-producers in TV movies with modest budgets. And that's when legal challenges started to arise when the company entered a legal battle with Wall Street Financial Associates, WSFA, alleging fraudulent inducement. Despite WSFA's attempt to block the sale, RKO pr proceeded with a negotiation with inter internetstudios.com. However, the sale fell through as in 2004, Internet Studios dot com folded part of the dot com bubble being bursted and that led to arco focus shifting to remake rights and that led to are we done yet being taken from this movie called somebody's building their dream house i forget what it's called and then beyond a reasonable doubt both receiving mixed critical reception and their latest film production is minimal we saw Lake Quartet in 2012, which was really, really successful, but it was a box office bomb, as well as b Barely Lethal in 2015. Both, like, critically somewhat, you know, successful, but again, they were box office flops. Now, Dina Merrill died in 2017, and RKO faced legal challenges as independent producer Keith Patterson sued the company over failed plans to create a TV series based on RKO properties. The suit alleged control issues with Mary Beth O'Connor, Ted Hartley's second in command ever since Dina Merrill died. And as of November 22nd, I mean, November 2020, 2022, Ted Hartley, who's 98 years old, now 99, continues to make public appearances connected to his advocation as a painter. So there's that. And let's move over, if you guys are still here, and talk about Dina Merrill, who could get it. I would like it to be known that I wish I could break up with my girlfriend, figure out how to time travel, and make my whole life mission to bang Dina Merrill, at least pre-1968, because, like, look at these pictures, man. Oh, I mean, she might, she was, like, 46 in these pictures. Okay, I'd suck a farter out her ass. Let's start it. So let's talk about Dina Merrill. Merrill's birthplace was New York City on December 29th, 1923. However, for an extended period, her birthday was mistakenly noted as December 9th, 1925. She was the sole offspring of Majorie Merriweather Post, the heiress to the Post serials, and her second spouse, Edward Francis Hutton, the Wall Street broker who founded E.F. Hutton & Co. Merrill had two half-sisters from her mother's initial marriage to Edward Bennett Close, Adelaide Ber Bervuret Close, who lived to 98 and like 1998, and she lived to the age of 90, and her other sister Eleanor Post Hutton, who lived from 1909 to 2006, which is 97, and the latter being the grandmother of actress Glenn Close. Yes, so she's technically her great niece is Glenn Close. Now, Merrill completed her education at Miss Porter's school, initially attended George Washington University in Washington, D.C. for a single term, later pursued her studies at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York City. Her training in acting took place at HB Studio under the guidance of Uta Hagen, which we will be making a video about Uta Hagen in the future. I wish I would have studied under Uta Hagen. I wish I could go to HB Studio. And now let's get right into the rest of the story of Dina Merrill. Throughout her acting career, Dina appeared in over 20 films, sharing the screen with legendary actors such as Cary Grant, Elizabeth Taylor, and Robert Mitchum. Her performances were praised for their depth and sophistication, reflecting the grace and charm she exuded both on and off the screen. Beyond her acting endeavors, Dina was known for her commitment to philanthropy. In 82, she and her third husband, actor Cliff Robertson, co-founded the Robertson Foundation, a charitable organization dedicated to supporting education, medical research, and the arts. Dina's philanthropic work demonstrated her desire to use her resources to make a positive impact on the world. Despite her glamorous exterior, 
Dina faced personal challenges, including the loss of loved ones and the complexities of navigating relationships in the public eye. Her resilience, however, shone through as she continued to contribute to the world of entertainment and philanthropy. In her later years, Dina Merrill remained a influential figure in both Hollywood and high society. Her legacy extended beyond filmography and leaving it an indelible mark on the world of arts, culture, and charity. And it's pretty cool to see like who she is and like all the movies she's been in and like the people she's been a part of. Really seriously, like she died in 2017 at 93. Her her father was one of the founders of one of the largest financial firms. It's pretty cool. Like, was she a Nepo baby? Probably. Because she was, I mean, she was part of the John F. Kennedy Performing Arts Center, like one of the board of trustees. She, what's crazy is she born, she was part of the board of directors of her father's company in the 80s. And then she sold it to the Lehman Brothers, who obviously went under. And she died in 93 due to dementia with Louis bodies. She had four, she, two of her four children died before she did. Her, for her son from her first marriage died a few weeks before he turned 24 and her other one died of her daughter died of ovarian cancer her last movie was beyond a reasonable doubt and she was uncredited and that was jesse metcalf amber tamberlin and michael douglas didn't have great reviews and her last time on tv for a movie was the glow and her last time actually just like normal acting was she was an episode of Ro roseanne which is pretty funny but yeah Dina Merrill, why did I want to make this? Because I thought she's super hot. Like, so hot, bro. So hot. <laughs> That's it, guys.